Welcome to Restaurant Food Fast with your host, Chuck Brooks. All right, welcome back to Restaurant Food Fast. Um, we're going to do a tomato basil cream today. It's super simple. Um, every bit as simple as the Alfredo. Uh, again, it's real easy. This one also doubles as a soup, and I didn't realize it. Um, they didn't click. I had a tomato basil cream soup at a high-end Italian restaurant. Didn't really think about it until my nephew um, at a party we had was running around with a cup of the sauce I make for pasta and drinking it as a soup. He liked it, so I just decided, okay, hey, all i got to do is thin it out a little bit more, and it's done. So I'll show you how to make a tomato, a tomato basil cream. Um, I'm going to show you how to make it fra diablo, and I'm also going to show you how to make it into a soup. Um, real simple, same basic thing. You're going to get three different recipes out of it. And that'll be it. Give me a second, I'll show you the ingredients. All right, for the tomato basil cream, really simple. I'm going to use this product, um, tomato product. The easiest way to do it is if you have spaghetti sauce. Take your favorite spaghetti sauce and heat it up in a pan. And I'll show you what we're going to do with it. I'm going to use these because, honestly, I'm all out of spaghetti sauce. Um, I use ragu because it's just a very basic base. And then you can do all kinds of stuff to spaghetti sauces. So I'll show you how to do it. I'm just going to do it with real tomato product. Um, I'm going to have to add a little more things to it than you would if you're using a sauce. But it'll be the same. So basically I'm going to start crank up my pan again nonstick. Um, I'm going to get this moving. A little bit of oil. Don't care what kind. I happen to use olive. Garlic. I buy this pre-done, pre-minced garlic. It's really easy. I don't like having to fight with the cloves. Um, I actually put quite a bit in. It's probably two good teaspoons of garlic, I would, I would guess. And just because I can, and for the flavor, I'm adding just a little bit of um, bacon grease. I don't know if you guys remember back way back when all the grandmas used to save greases and fats from things they cooked. Um, big in the Jewish community, uh, I think it's called what is it, schmaltz? It's uh, it's basically rendered chicken fat. These things add wonderful flavors to your foods. Um, if you think about it, if you have rendered chicken fats, all the greases that come off of a cooked chicken. The next time you're making a chicken soup or a um, chicken gravy, anything that needs fat to it, that fat already has the flavor of what you're trying to make. So it comes out really nice. Um, they used to save it. I remember my grandma, little Italian grandma, used to have little containers of different types of fats that she had collected and she would use when she would cook things. Um, so for this, I'm basically just going to saute this garlic up a little bit. I want to start getting it cooking. Grab me a spatula here, or a spoon of some sort. The spoon looks good. Gotta watch garlic. Cooked garlic is very good. Burnt garlic is very bad. One of the most bitter substances I know of. I can't. If you burn it, just throw it away. There you go. Put this back over some heat. Now I'm going to check. I was going to use two. I may not need to. Hmm. We'll see. So basically what I want to happen here is I want this to reduce. If you didn't catch the last show, reduction is just when you put something that is liquid into a pan and let the water evaporate out. With tomato product, it's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. Um, it's also going to concentrate the flavors and it's going to get darker. The other thing it does is it gets a little bit of the acidity. Sometimes you know when you put, you make your own sauce that they 
have that acid taste from the tomatoes. Two ways to get rid of that. Any type of sugar, so if you would grate carrots into it, carrots have high sugar, it'll get rid of that acid taste. If you would just put a little bit of sugar in it and cook it, it'll get rid of that acid taste. Um, I just reduce this down until it's it creates its own sugars and neutralizes the acids. It gets darker. Um, for this recipe, the, actually the darker you get it, the better, but um, it doesn't take a whole lot. So as this is cooking, it already has garlic in it, but I'm adding more. I'm adding salt because I want to add a salt base. pepper. And I'm going to add some basil. And just tomato basil. So I'm going to add actually quite a bit of basil. It's probably a teaspoon. A whole teaspoon of basil, which is actually kind of a lot. And in your tomato products, there's a lot of um, I actually don't like a, a chunk product for this. Uh, the smoother, the, the better. I don't like tomatoes a whole lot. So I try and get things that don't have a lot of uh, big pieces of tomato in it, just for my personal use. Now, if you love tomatoes, this recipe works great with fresh tomatoes. Take them. I I'll show you how to do this in another recipe. But you basically take the skin off of them, which isn't real hard. Um, you just take your tomato and on the bottom of it you make a little left. Boil some water, get the water boiling, drop the tomatoes in just for a couple, 15 seconds maybe. And then have a thing of ice water and you put the tomatoes back into it. And that skin peels right off. So that that's how you, you get the skin off it. And then you just dice it up real good, put it in your pan and cook it exactly the same way I am. Put whatever spices you like in it. Um, and this recipe will come out pretty much the same. So, I don't know if you can catch the colors in here, but if you saw what it started with, with the bright red, now it's a darker. Now it's a darker red. Um, you know, it slowly works its way towards a brownish red or a maroon color. Um, like I said, the darker you want it, you know, just cook it more and more. Um, now I'm going to... Add a little bit of milk to it. Put that heat up. Tomato basil cream is pink. So, you add enough milk to make it pink. The color really doesn't matter. Um, taste it throughout the cooking process. And you will see what you like. If you want it smoother and, and less, uh, less acidic, more cream. It's, it's real simple. Now the only trick when you're doing these is with this sauce, you really got to check the flavor because milk will wash out the flavor of just about anything. So when you're doing that, you have to make sure that your sauce can stand up to the amount of dairy product you're putting into it. We have a couple more ingredients to add, so I'm not really worried too much about it right now. Um, I'm gonna let this heat through. I'm gonna give it a little taste. good. 
cheese. Did I say cheese in the ingredients list? No, my producer shaking his head at me. I didn't. Um, any of these sauces, just about all of these sauces that I do, um, I put cheese in. So this is going to add, like I said before, it's going to add a little bit of salt to it. It's also going to add that cheese flavor to it. All right, it's basically finished at this point. This is a really light, really light sauce. But, as I'll show you in a minute, if you cook this down and you reduce it more, it will thicken up some. Um, actually, it'll thicken up all the way till you burn it in the bottom of the pan. What I'm going to do is show you another way. If you're making a sauce and you're like, oh man, this is too thin, this is too thin. It's not a big deal. Pasta. Turn the heat off. As your pasta comes up to temp, it's going to suck down this sauce. Remember I was telling last episode about the um, Alfredo, how Alfredo will end up eating the sauce. It, it just makes a congealed mess. Pasta will do that to anything. You can put it in water, and if you let it set, it's going to suck it up. It's just the nature of the beast. It's a starch. Um, if you think your sauce is too thin, don't sweat it. Put some of your pasta in it. And like I say, the tomato basil creams are generally a thinner sauce to begin with. So you don't want this thing to be big and heavy. Um, it's a really nice light lunch meal. But if you drop your pasta into it, um, now you've got the, you've got the consistency you're looking for. It's a real pretty dish. You saw how long it took. Um, so we were talking about the Alfredo. If you decide this is, oh, I really love this sauce, I want to make it all the time, but I want it thicker. Do the same thing that you did with the Alfredo. Make a roux. Make a roux in your separate pan. Cook down your tomatoes in, in a separate pan. Add your tomato product to your roux. Mix that together, then add your liquid. It will, boom, thicken it up. You can make it as thick as you want at that point. Um, this, it also the type of fat you use, the milk you use. If you use a light milk, it's going to be thinner. If you use a heavier cream product, it's going to be heavier. It's going to be thicker. This is pretty much done. Um, I'm going to plate it. Show you what it looks like. And that's it. It's finished. It's a really, really simple dish. Okay, there you go. It's plated. Tomato basil cream. Very simple. Very light. Um, you see the sauce. Not really thick. Um, great lunch menu. And as you can see, if you would use a, a heavier cream based product, the sauce would be much thicker. This is made with 2% milk, so this is actually kind of good for you. Um, but this is also the reason it doubles as a soup, if you can see it. Um, if you like tomato soup, if you like the taste of this sauce, like I say, my nephew runs around drinking it in a cup because he likes the sauce but doesn't want to be bothered with the pasta. So that's it. It's, I mean, you saw how long that took. It was boom. It was done. Um, here, let me set this down. I was uh, notified that I did, didn't go through the ingredients list. Now, you saw me cook it, but I'm going to go through it again anyway just to, just to let you know. Um, of course, your pasta, however many people you're feeding. Um, it, it's all up to you. Some sort of tomato product. I used in this episode just crushed tomatoes. Um, you have to season it a lot more if you're using a blank, what I call a blank tomato product. This is a blank product. It has no flavorings to it. It's just tomato. If you use your favorite pasta sauce, um, it, it makes this so much easier because you don't even have to season anything. A little salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic, you're done. Um, 
like I say, I use the ragu because it's just a blank sauce is what I would consider it. It doesn't have a sweet taste, doesn't have a salty taste, doesn't have chunks of anything. It's, it's great as a base. Um, but any sauce you like. Uh, if you like the sweet sauces, grab whatever prego, you know, um, and use those as a base. I used some garlic, as I showed you, some minced garlic. Um, you can use fresh, you can use however you want. Um, this is just easier for me. Basil, hence tomato basil cream. So you got the tomato product, you got your basil product, and then whatever dairy you like. Um, I'm just thinking about if you're lactose intolerant, which I am, but I really don't care. I eat it anyway. Um, you might be able to do this with a soy product. The only problem I find is a lot of the soy products are sweet, but in a in a basil setting, that might not be bad. So you could give it a shot. If you do, let me know. Drop me a line. Because um, I've never tried it with a soy product, and I'm just thinking. I think that would actually might work pretty well. Um, but any of this you want. The thicker the sauce you want, the more you want to cook it. Now, when we did this show, if I wanted that sauce thicker, all I had to do was set it there and let it cook. It'll reduce. And it'll get thicker and thicker as it reduces. Um, if you use a heavier cream product, it's going to be thicker to start with. So, it's not a big deal. Now, I told you earlier, Fra Diablo. Basically, brother of the devil. The only thing it is, crushed red pepper flakes. So you take this same sauce, dump red pepper flakes into it, now you got a fried Diablo. It, it's hot. Um, this is what my family usually likes. A um, bunch of these in there, some shrimp to that, and boom, you're done. It's it's great recipe for seafood. It's incredible. Um, you could do chicken in here. The chicken kind of gets lost in it. Um, doesn't stand up to the flavor. Seafood works really well with that. So anything you like, you could actually, if you have a, a, a heavy enough fish, something like a, a halibut or shark steak, swordfish, something that's thick-bodied, you could almost turn this into kind of a paella by taking chunks of that fish and cooking it in this sauce with mussels in here would be wonderful. Uh, clams, you name it, scallops, shrimp, anything. This thing's great with, with the seafood base. Um, basically that's it. You salt and pepper it to taste. The basil gives you the flavor you want, the tomatoes give you the acid you want. Put any other food product in it and you're good to go. It's really simple, really easy. Um, that's pretty much it for that one. There you go. That was the uh, tomato basil cream. Now since I'm getting into some sauces, um, next week I think I'm going to show you guys how to make some real easy stuff at home that everybody thinks takes a long time. So I'm going to do it real quick beef stroganoff um, with ground meat though. So you don't have to go slicing up anything, you just take some ground meat, throw it in a pan. And it's basically built off the Alfredo sauce. Um, instead of Parmesan cheese, we're going to throw some sour cream to it and a little bit of beef stock and you'll see it comes out perfect. It's real easy. So that's what we're going to do for next week. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, comments, feel free, drop us a line, restaurantfoodfast at gmail.com. Um, not only if you want to see a recipe done, if you have questions about how to do something, um, if you have any issues with cooking or, or anything to deal with the kitchen and utensils and stuff like that, give me a line. Um, most of the stuff I can answer. If not, I still know a whole bunch of chefs. If I can't get you the answer, I can. If I can't have the answer, I can get you the answer. So that's pretty much it. Um, next week we're going to do stroganoff, and I'll show you the variations on that, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll see you guys next week.